What's up everybody, I'm Justin Maytag from Room 51 where we talk all things board gaming and today I'm doing a new segment called Board Game Biz where I'm going to talk about something in the board gaming industry and really focus in on the business aspect of it. And This is kind of coming from me being a uh, business student in college and after finishing my bachelor's of business administration, I'm still fairly passionate about looking at different business aspects. Today, I'm focusing on one of my favorite companies in board gaming, which is Stonemeyer Games, and I want to hone in on one of the things I, have, I think has made them extremely successful, which is their brand management. Brand management is just how you're managing your brand. <laughs> so it's how, for, specifically for Stonemeyer Games, it's how they are going to really manage what people think about and how consumers react when they see their logo and when they hear the name Stonemeyer Games. And anything that kind of falls into that huge umbrella is brand management. And I think Stonemeyer has done an extremely good job of brand management, specifically in the concept of brand experience. So brand experience is whenever you're interacting with this brand. So for example, if I'm going onto the Stonemeyer website, or I see an advertisement for a Stonemeyer game, or I see that founder and owner Jamie, Jamie Stedmeyer is live on Facebook as he does, uh, that is now part of the brand experience of Stonemeyer games. I think Stonemeyer games has just done a phenomenal job of brand experience. There are a few major pieces I think have been really successful in their brand experience. So number one, Jamie Stedmeyer going live on Facebook, uh, putting out social media posts on his own account, uh, constantly replying to comments on those accounts. All these things I think have just done such a good job on creating valuable brand experiences for many consumers. So an example of that is when he does go live on Facebook ch live chat, he is there for an hour and he answers every consumer question, no matter how big or small, generally speaking, at least. Uh, I mean, all the time I'll pop in there and I will ask something super Stonemeyer related or very has nothing to do with board gaming and he always answers it to the best of his ability and he does that with a whole bunch of other people and i think that's extremely valuable it kind of allows jamie to just feel like your friendly neighborhood designer instead of feeling like this major monolith uh publishing company i think about this when i think of z-man games i have no clue who runs z-man games i have no clue what any of the people behind Z-Man Games, and by the way, that's not an attack on Z-Man Games. It's just, be, to me now, Z-Man Games feels like this big organization that I know nothing about on the interior. But Stonemeyer instead, I feel like Jamie lives down the block and I can go grab a cup of coffee with him and talk about what's going on with Stonemeyer Games. I do wanna add one thing to this, though overall I think the community that Jamie has built online through social media, the blog posts, all this stuff, he's really become a part of the board gaming community and talks about other uh, publisher publishing companies' games. You know, he talks about his competitors essentially, and I think that overall it has had a very positive effect of him doing this. The negative side of this is now the Stonemeyer brand is heavily tied to Jamie Stedmeyer. So while Z-Man Games and other publishing companies may have designers and people in the background that you know if they do slip up and make uh, a human error, a human mistake online or anything along those lines, Z-Man Games and these other publishing companies can now try to distance the brand from that person and try to show like, hey, that's not what we're about. Stonemeyer Games would have a very particular problem on their hands uh, and every time Jamie does do any type of mistake that's happened in the past where uh, he's done some lashback over decisions made possibly ways things were said th these types of things uh, causes a bit of a fragility to the Stonemeyer brand now it's so dependent on Jamie kind of keeping sharp and kind of you know trying to make sure that he does stay very conscious of how he's speaking because at the end of the day the business he's running is so heavily tied to him that if his public image now looks really bad, 
it's going to be very hard for Stonemaier games not to look really bad. Another thing about Stonemaier's brand experience is the success of their previous games, okay? So, yes, a successful game kind of comes down to product management, which is a bit different from brand management, but the previous success of their games can start to bleed into brand management. Stonemaier Games has three games in the top 100 on BGG. Now, as a consumer, especially if I'm not as familiar with Stonemaier Games, and I go and look up Stonemaier Games, I land on their BGG page, and I see three of their games is in the top 100, I now know that's a successful company that has created successful games in the past. And that does add some value. Another thing about Somire's brand experience, and again, this does kind of go into a bit with product management, is they really know what they're about. So what I mean by that is they're very targeted in what types of games they produce. If you go onto their website and you look up how to submit a game, they, he, I mean, there's like uh, 12 golden rules that you have to, well, not have to follow, you can submit whatever you want, but it's essentially saying, we really suggest you follow these 12 things because that's the kind of game we want. And to summarize it a bit, they want about a mid-weight Euro game uh, that takes about one to two hours and sits more than uh, four people, right? So that's why a lot of their games will play at five or six. Uh, and all of their games are these mid-weight Euro games that really are, the, he, uh, Jamie has described it as, you know, he doesn't want any side salads. He wants his games to be the main course for Stonemaier games. And the reason why that whole product focus is so important is now you can really target your brand experience to that. So an example of that is the Stonemaier name. When coming up with the Stonemaier name, they wanted the name to sound kind of German. Well, lucky for them, Jamie's last name is German rooted. Uh, so they took the Meyer from it. And Alan Stone, the other co-founder, just added Stone to the beginning, creating Stone Meyer. And that does sound like a Euro game company to me. And I'm sure for a lot of consumers, it does as well. And being so focused on the type of market that you're going to try to appeal to allows you to create this very catered brand experience to allow, okay, we want people that we think would play mid-weight Euros, which is a lot of gamers, in my opinion. Uh, and so how do we cater those experiences? I think that has, in a lot of ways, they've really gone with that, and Stonemaier has been able to use that strategy to their benefit and create value. Now, I keep mentioning how it's creating value. It's creating value with all these different brand experience things. How is that creating value? That's with a concept called brand equity now. So brand equity is how much your brand being on a product or associated with a service provides value to it for a consumer against a generic brand. That's like kind of the general definition for it. And the example I like to use is if you think about detergents, you can either buy the generic detergent brand, or you can buy Tide, the massive company brand that has spent a lot of time working on its brand experience and brand management, all to create that value, that equity. So at, when you're in a store, you might be willing to spend $2 more on Tide versus the generic brand. That now means that Tide has $2 worth of brand equity right there. And that's fantastic if you're making so many sales. So Stonemaier and gaming in general, where it's a little bit different with the whole versing a generic brand, but the way I like to think of it is uh, when Stonemaier releases a game, how much money are consumers willing to spend on that game versus if an unknown company had released that exact same game, all right? And the reason I bring up that scenario is because I'm thinking of uh, the game they just released, Red Rising. The standard edition of the game, $40. Do I think that's a bad price? Not at all. But everybody in the comments were saying $40 is a steal. $40 is such a great price for this Stonemaier game. Uh, they, they couldn't believe that was $40. There's so many comments talking about this. But if some unknown company had released the same game for $40, you would not be seeing so many social media chains and comments talking about $40 for this game? 
There, there's no way we all got it. No, because it's an unknown company that hasn't built up its brand. It hasn't had enough brand experience yet to provide it with that equity. Actually, I think a lot of consumers for unknown companies might be a little hesitant to drop $40 on this game. Are you crazy? There's so many competitors out there that I'd rather drop $40 on. Why, why would I drop $40 on? What? I'll wait for reviews. But no, you got Stonemaier is doing so many uh, pre-order sales now because they dropped the game at $40, which so many people are now thinking, oh, wow, that, that's such a great price. And I really think that's where Stonemaier's brand experience has created this value. It's, a, it's getting consumers now to spend money on their games when if they were this unknown company that didn't sustain that quality of a brand, they might not be. I do want to end this off with saying I don't think that Jamie Stedmeyer and Stonemaier Games are sitting there at their test going, ha ha ha, yes, now we will make them spend so much money. Uh, no, I don't think that's what's happening. Uh, I mean, obviously, they're running a business. Yes, they want sales. And yes, they want to make money. That's the ultimate goal of a business. But I think that the whole brand experience and everything is really how they want to run the company. They could be doing different tactics. They don't have to be that transparent with everything and they can probably still be taking on different tactics to have maybe a similar brand equity. I do believe this is just how they decided to run the company because that's how they wanted to run the company and I think that it overall I think that it's a good way to run their business. They're extremely transparent and with that providing them value, I say kudos, have fun, that's awesome. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this whole Stonemaier Games brand experience, brand equity concept. If there's any uh, board gaming companies that you think provide a great brand experience and brand, and it might contribute to their brand equity, definitely let me know. All right, until next time, this has been Room 51.